gotta get up, gotta get out. Who grab the world by the throat and shout? Who gotta find it, get us a shell? Who making bread out of nothing but air? Fighting high, they're hitting the ground. Catching a penny, but missing the pound. Doesn't matter, cause we'll soon turn it around. As soon as we get home, we make it and we take it home. Morning, Grandad. All right there, son. Morning, Grandad. <laughs> All right, Skipper. I've got shopping to do before work. Ta-ra! Ta-ra, Grandad! It's all right you lot getting jobs. What about my lunch? I could be dead by half past five. <laughs> They've all got work over the road. They've always worked, Julie. I mean proper work. Legal work. What do you mean, legal work? Everything my family does is legal. Then why is it, Billy, that our broken television set, bought by old Jack, can't be taken back to the chap who sold it to us? Because he pays you money and you takes your chance. That set was a bargain. How could it have been a bargain? The picture's always been like an impressionist painting. I don't know what you mean. I mean, you get the impression something's there, but you can't make it out. There are lots of things we wouldn't have but for our Jack. Oh, no. I thought that this morning when the tea's maid switched itself on at five o'clock, made horrible choking noises until seven, and then served up a pot of cold tea. <laughs> Won't mention the B-Day, if it is. Uh, no, don't mention the B-Day, please, Julie. Except to say that if we had a fire, it could put it out in two minutes flat. You've got me trapped now, haven't you? Now they've all got jobs. There's no one to go to. You just put banana in that sandwich, Billy. I know. Then why are you putting pickle on it? Oh, oh sorry. Here, you can have it for your lunch. <laughs> you spare it. That will seem funny, though. An empty house. It seems wrong. I mean, the whole street will seem dead. Oh, there's still your granddad. His voice is so loud. That graveyard's full of people wearing earmuffs. <laughs> I'm glad we're better now, Julie. You know, back together and happy. Yeah. The whole street seems dead. Hello, Mr. Copley's surgery, Miss Boswell speaking. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Copley's surgery, Miss Boswell speaking. The uh, first one will do. I thought you might like me to, um... I'd just like you to be yourself. All right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, before the uh, entourage arrive, just let me explain. This is a very special job. Uh, most of our patients get better, but some don't. And when they don't, well, that's when you need to practice calm and composure. And the only way to achieve this, to keep on remembering that whatever the outcome, our aim is to mend and cure. All right? Yes, Mr. Copley. Right. Now, you can do the reception job for today, and we'll go on from there. And don't forget, Animal's name, animal's address, animal's age, animal's symptoms, and all this in order of their arrival. Unless it's an emergency. And guess what? Here they come. Cat, male, three years old, name Tipsy. Nine, Alter Road, Liverpool 19. 
Symptoms is a bloody nuisance. Treatment, the knackers yard. <laughs> I'm gonna get this down only. I'm gonna tell him I'll in three hours. Our aim, Mr. Tipsy. Is... Jones! Tipsy's the cat's name! <laughs> Jones is to mend and cure. Ah, well, perhaps you can cure him from peeing up the walls. <laughs> While you're at it, you can mend the wife's canary. Only he brought it to her as a present. <laughs> Dead. Oh, don't cry. I'll find you a home. There isn't an explosive device in here, is there, Mr. Boswell? Would I do such a thing? Would I? This is a telephone bill. It has nothing to do with me. Please note the amount. £267.49p. <laughs> you sure your chauffeur, gardener or housekeeper aren't making any sneaky little calls to Australia? That is an ordinary phone bill. The type that drops through every letterbox made up of Hello, Jack, I can't talk. It's too expensive. Type calls. It doesn't concern me, Mr. Boswell. We pay for essentials, not luxuries. It is essential. Our granddad, for instance. Oh, not your granddad again. <laughs> your granddad, Mr. Boswell, cost the state more money than the entire royal family. Our granddad can't get about. He needs to have contact. Supposing he fell and broke his leg. We'd just have to close down the country for the day, wouldn't we? Next! Uh, excuse me, would you go to the next window, please, sweetheart? Only she suffers from that well-known civil servant's disease, repetition of the tonsils. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'm not in the mood for people making jokes about the family. So what are you going to do? Hit me. They've all tried that, Mr. Boswell. They've all clambered over this counter, waving their little war flags and bearing their little chests. But I have my ways of dealing with them. Well, I hope their sudden inability to procreate was only a temporary setback. <laughs> In some cases, Mr. Boswell. It's very frightening for men. This sudden birth of macho women with wide front knickers and nut crushes strapped to their knees. <laughs> a pretty face. How long have you had the bill? 18 months. 18 months? <laughs> have you paid the other bill since? Yes. It's not my business. Your business is our welfare. That bill is unfair, and it makes us not well. Can't you offer them anything? Time, sweetheart. Time. Got lots of that. I'm sorry, Mr. Boswell. I can't do anything about it. Neither can we. Have you ever thought of selling your jag to pay the bill? Listen, little DHSS lady, all we've got to look forward to now is that moment when some lunatic presses the red button and we all turn into brown bread. So when I go, I go in style, OK? Supposing you're not in your jag? I'm never more than four minutes away from it. <laughs> uh, welcome to Lakeside Boating Club. Uh, the owner is in hospital having his hernia done at the moment. Oh. <laughs> and my brother and I are in temporary charge. The rates are... Look, just harness us up a boat, pal, and cut the salmon. Yeah, and we don't want to have to ask missing this time. The rates are two pounds for one hour and, of course, one pound for half an hour. Uh, my brother Jack will tuition you if you haven't sailed a boat before. <laughs> Dental consulting rooms. Oh, hello, Grandad. <laughs> no, love, I've already explained to you. I'm working. Working. <laughs> Joey's going to bring your lunch round. No. 
There's no dead pig, no. <laughs> no newfangled puddings. Look, why don't you just leave it to Joey? Leave it to Joey! <laughs> Have we ever given you anything that's done you any harm? You've got nearly all your own teeth. I've got a room full of people here. They can't close their gobs for fillings. <laughs> Want me to be a moment? <laughs> Don't worry about me, son. Your man's right. She and I'll never make it. She's a good woman, Dad. I don't want a good woman, son. I want a bad and evil and devious one. <laughs> she keeps me warm, and she makes a good cup of tea. Your man's too proper, Joey. Whiter than white. Every time we went to bed together, I had to go to confession. God must have got bored out of his mind listening to the story of my sex life. Well, is a Catholic too, isn't she? Yeah, but she only pops in now and then to say a prayer of thanks. OK, then. Keep in touch. I'll give you a bell. The house is empty now. They're all working. Doesn't feel the same. Change in time, son. Change in times. Ready? I did, me love. Come on now, I've got a great long list of things for you to do. There she goes. Thunder knickers. What's wrong? Nothing. Roxy, what's wrong? It's nothing, Joey. Who did it? It's my fault. I don't love him. And he knows. He doesn't know what to do. It's all my fault. Oh, oh Roxy, Roxy. I thought I'd lost you. I'll kill him. I told you, it's not the real him. He's a nice guy. He's hurt. I was hurt. I didn't go around hitting people, did I? <laughs> but he doesn't worry about his face like you do. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello, Grandad. Yes, I'm bringing your lunch in now. I'm just putting it on the tray, OK? Everything will be all right, baby. Everything will be all right. Sorry, it's late, Grandad. I don't want it now. It's too late. I'm ill now. It's only two o'clock. I hope my tea's on that tray as well. I always have my tea at half past two. Ah, it's enough to feed a horse on this tray, Grandad. Yeah, I'll pour your tea for you. In fact, I might join you for a couple of minutes. I've had no lunch yet. It's not right them all going out to work. They've disrupted everything. Yeah, well, uh, there's been a bit of a shake-up, you see. Uh, Mum and Dad have decided to separate properly. They're always rowing and separating. They did it after the wedding. She got in the car and he got on a bus. <laughs> it's a funny thing, love, Grandad. It isn't love. It's hanky-panky that ruins it. <laughs> Love is what you feel for your brother or your sister, or your mum or your dad, or your friend, or your dog. <laughs> it's hanky-panky that causes all the trouble. 
Anyway, it's no life for Mummy, no cooking and looking after us all the time. She needs to fulfil herself. Me and your granny were fine until I hanky pankied. <laughs> Runs in the family, eh, Grandad? Runs in the human race, that's what it is. I, uh, I met Roxy again today. Do you remember her? You went all soft over her. I did, Grandad, yeah. Then she went off and got married. She did, yeah. Where's her husband then? Oh, he's still around, but uh, I think the marriage is a bit tired, like, you know. More hanky panky coming up. No, no, I was just pleased to see it, that's all. Just thought I'd tell you about it, being there's nobody next door to talk to. What you want to do is see her every day, get it over with. The thing is, I love her, Grandad. I've always loved her. I loved someone. I know. I know, that's no, why... No, no, not your granny. No. <laughs> no. Edie Matheson. No. I met her about ten years after we were married. We kissed and cuddled. Oh? In the greenhouse, in Lord Sefton's garden. <laughs> Style, eh, Grandad? I loved your granny in a different way. A more solid, lasting way. I loved Edie Matheson with me guts. <laughs> we only saw each other about half a dozen times. That was the trouble. There wasn't time for the rot to set in. It's always been a dream. I never could be happy after Edie Matheson. You're a wise one, Grandad. Sitting there with your head like a box of tricks. So what you want to do is get it over with. Get everything over with before you die. Go to your grave with a contented look. <laughs> and put my tea down. Get your own cup. <laughs> <laughs> But over on the island. It's out of bounds, the island. I told them that. I suppose they've gone to bury all the stuff they've nicked on land. No. They've gone to dig up the stuff those other guys nicked and buried this morning. <laughs> it's a smuggler's cove, this place. It's a den of iniquity. It's bloody freezing as well. <laughs> Turn the cabbage off, will you, love? I've had an awful day. People have little animals put down. Put down? What for? They get fed up with them. Oh, God bless us. Isn't man cruel? Turn the cabbage off, will you, love? <laughs> Turn the cabbage off, will you, Jack? It's a smuggler's cave down there. A den of iniquity. Turn the cabbage off, Adrian. <laughs> I don't know. I've been underwater all day. <laughs> I've had an awful day. People have little animals put down. Put down? What for? They get fed up with them. It's a good job Mongy doesn't have us put down every time he gets fed up with us. <laughs> did you hear that, Adrian, about the animals? I did hear it, yeah. But I'm too knackered to respond. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I'm very glad I'm a human being, because if I was anything else, I'd be in the hands of human beings. Well, somebody turn the cabbage off. <laughs> so, the workers return, eh? What joy. What joy to be of the wage-earning community again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should I turn the cabbage off? <laughs> oh, we have algae for dinner. <laughs> Ah, I'll, uh, I'll go to the chippy. <laughs> Roxy, I'm on my way over. It's no good, Joey. We can't do anything. When will he be back? I, I don't know. Ages. You can stay at our house. Don't be silly, Joey. I'm married. I'm coming to the door. Don't, Joey. You. You're the bastard. Oh, Jesus. Oh, it looks smashing, ma'am. I don't know how you do it. All I need is a state of panic and I can conjure up a meal out of an old armchair. 
Joey's a long time with the chips. Press. Couldn't we Press. Get... We thank the old Lord. Why do we always begin by thanking him? I mean, he doesn't get everything right. Why can't we tell the truth sometimes? <laughs> we thank the old Lord. For another shitty day. <laughs> for this life. For our eyes, our ears, and our mouths, although sometimes we don't put them to good use. We thank thee for the food on the table, and please, God, may there be enough to go round now that Billy is here. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, back from paradise again, are we? We've had a row. We don't seem to agree on anything these days. No. Not you, Billy. You've got your own life now, over the road. Oh, well, uh, he gets it for free, does he? Julia having dinner on her own, then? She likes it that way. She doesn't need me. She's got Francesca. Oh, it only seems that way, Billy. <clears throat> Babies take up a lot of time and energy. When the last one of you lot suddenly grew up and I had time to notice other things, I didn't recognise your father. I thought he was a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can start on the salad if you're hungry. How did work go? People have little animals put down. What for? Get fed up with them. <laughs> oh, aren't people horrible? Julie's friend knows someone who was annoyed because his neighbour reversed into his car. So we went round to the house with this mincer. Will somebody stop him? <laughs> Billy, we've had enough, OK? Why are people so cruel? We're the superior race, you see. We're more intelligent than they are. I mean, he was a nice chap, this friend of yeah, Julie's all right. was. And it... Enough. The story ended for us with the word mincer. <laughs> all right. Poor little budgie. Oh, no. <laughs> Will you go back to your wife? Will you? It's getting worse. I don't seem to get on with anyone anymore. Mm -hmm. It's only your god, Billy. The rest of you's all right. <laughs> Where on earth is that, Joey? All these references to my god. I'll stop talking altogether one day. Ah, oh, here he is. Uh, uh, sorry it took so long. Only uh, something cropped up. I made a salad while we were waiting, love. Joey! Oh, Joey! Who did that? Now, calm down, everybody. Calm down. <laughs> Are your teeth all right? Everything intact. <laughs> Thank God. God, oh, isn't he brave? Now, come on, eat up, everybody. Come. I'm calling the police. Now, look, ma'am. It was my fault. I went to see Roxy. I thought you said she was married. She is. He was there, her husband. I know, ma'am. I know. That's called adultery, that is. I didn't know he was going to be there. Look, can we not talk about it? Did she ask you to go around, Joey? That's infidelity, that is. No. <laughs> He started knocking her about. I was worried. I could never hit a woman. That's called wife battering, that is. <laughs> I could hit him, though. <laughs> I could shove you in a mangle and turn the animal without batting an eyelid. That's called agitation, that is. <laughs> or flattery. <laughs> Mango! Flattery! Oh, <laughs> oh, there's something wrong with this house. It's lost its sense of humour. It's not like home anymore. We've all had a busy day. We've all been working. Turn round, the both of you. That's better than rowing all day. I've been rowing all day. Was that the row that started on your wedding day? Or another one? And Joey's upset about Roxy. I'm upset about little animals being put down. If she mentions those little animals again, I'll kill all of you. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> I'll kill him. I didn't mention the animals. Why don't you kill it? I'll save you the trouble. I'll kill myself. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Well, one thing's fairly obvious. Work doesn't suit any of you. You haven't got the temperament for it. It's this business of having to be in a certain place at a certain time. I like to drift. Only not in a lake. <laughs> to be nice to people all the time. There was a patient today, big red face man, kept glaring at me across the desk. It was like looking at a tomato that had been run over. <laughs> I sat there being nice to him, and all the time I was hoping the drill would slip. Well, I'm used to regime, of course, but there's no regime down at that boathouse. Everything that's been stolen for the last ten years is buried on that island. <laughs> you can bury your granny there, no one would notice. <laughs> I'm going off selling sandwiches as well. Cheese and pickle, please, love. Oh. Egg mayonnaise, please, love. Hey, 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 that's enough. Just because everybody else is put up, you have to join in, don't you? You've got a good business there, now shut it. 
I'll go. If that's your father, tell him I do not want him in this house. And when I've got time, I'm filing for divorce. <laughs> Mr. Boswell. That's right. Brother of Freddie Boswell. Son. I'm sorry to trouble you, sir. There's been an accident. Go on. We think it's your father. He was sheltering in a workman's hut when a lorry ran into it. Would you... Uh... No. It's all right. We'll be there. Thank you. Pithmore Street. OK. Next, Freddy Boswell. What next? Hey, I told you. Now get off. Go on. We've got professional rescue teams here. Now off you go. Go on. Wait. Oh. Are you there? Dad? Haven't I told you? Oh. It's okay, Dad. We'll get you. Pull yourself together, son. Always running away was. Not was, is. Always running. Oh. From where he lived from where he worked, from where the worry was, from where the truth was. Running, running. Hope his legs are all right. <laughs> what took you so long? How is it, Dad? My legs. Oh, God. We'll be with you, Dad. Hang on. Hello, Nelly Boswell. Get out here, you big fruit. <laughs> Prayers. <laughs> and thank thee, dear father, for... <laughs> for... <laughs> we thank thee, O oh father, for plucking one of thy flock from death and returning him to his loving family. Help! Will somebody get me out of here? <laughs> Lil. He's in a hut with Lilo Lil. For bringing him home to his waiting family, we thank thee again, O oh Lord, for this miracle. And we ask the O oh Father to perform another miracle and cover him up again. Hello, Ward D, sister speaking. Oh, hello, yes. Could you tell me how Mr. Freddie Boswell is, please? Well, Mr. Boswell's left leg is broken, but otherwise he's fine. Is that the lady who rang before? No, no, it's a... Don't you dare mention her name on this phone! <laughs> she is a tot! <laughs> Hello? Oh, Joey. Oh, uh, listen, Mum, Dad's fine. I've been to see him. No, I'm not ringing about that. I'm giving up work. I'm staying at home. Things are going to be the way they were. Are you sure, ma'am? I don't want my family drifting. You were beginning to drift, all of you. Great, ma'am. And you, Joey. I don't want you getting mixed up, love, with Roxy and her marriage. Believe me, I know, Joey. It'll bring you nothing but... but sorrow. OK, ma'am. I, I understand. It's bad news, Joey. Mixing up with other people's lives. Someone will come along, son. Someone special. Sure, ma'am. Thanks. Uh, I'll... I'll see you soon. Bye, ma'am. Bye, ma'am. What are we gonna do, Joey? We're... we're gonna do... whatever we do. Gotta get up, gotta get out. Gotta. Grab the world by the throat and shout. Fire.